Hey everybody, this is Jared from Square One Physio. I've got Caitlin here, another one of our physios. We've got another bang up session for you guys. Uh, this one's aimed at upper body conditioning and strength. It's a push-pull session, so looking at trying to work on a couple of key movements around pushing or pressing, and a lot of movements around pulling or rowing. And this helps to optimize balance between the front and the back of our upper bodies, which is really important. Um, as a physio, we typically find that people are quite tight and strong through the front and often very weak uh, in the back area. Um, so this is aiming at trying to make sure that we have balance in those key areas. So let's dive straight into it. First thing we're going to do, Caitlin, is get you down into a push-up position. Now, for most men, they'll be starting in a long plank position, so a common push-up position. Um, with Caitlin here this morning, we're going to start on our knees. You'll see here that we've also got a loop band. We're using the loop band around the hands. And what we want to do with that is spread the floor so that your arms are about shoulder width apart. The added benefit of using the band is to really engage those muscles um, around our scapulas, around our shoulder blades, as well as activating our rotator cuff. Rotator cuff is a common injury that we see through the clinic and one that we want to prevent if we can. So a neat little modification to include. So first thing we're going to do, Caitlin, is we're going to rock on through and do 10 slow control reps when you're ready. That's great. One, two, and you'll see that Caitlin has great tempo here. She's controlling her shoulder blades back and together as she goes down towards the floor and then pushing equally through her hands to return to the start position. The added use of the loop band makes it quite a lot different to a conventional push-up, but again, just a sneaky little added extra. How's that? Yeah, good. All right. <laughs> All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna move right on into the pull movement, okay? So we're gonna have Caitlin use this dowel, hands on either side. You wanna place your hands about shoulder width apart. Okay, Kay's taking a step back for me there, Caitlin. Wonderful. First thing you want to do is make sure that the first movement is from the shoulders, pulling your shoulder blades back and together, then pulling with your arms to your side. And Caitlin's going to perform 15 of these for us in a row. Okay. There we go. Is that okay? Perfect. Good. Now the key thing with this is you can use differing power band strengths as part of our performance package. Um, to account for your specific level of strength. There's bands that go up in strength and bands that come down in strength. With the use of this dowel, it makes it a lot more user friendly. And if you don't have something like our specific dowel here, you can just use a broomstick or a mop at home, which is really convenient. But we're now gonna go into an overhead press. So Caitlin's gonna stand on the band with her feet shoulder width apart. You then sneak the broomstick or the dowel between the band. Now you're going to position it at about shoulder height in front of your body. All right, and it gets a little bit in your face, but that's all right. Just push on through, and we're going to go for 15 controlled repetitions here. Great. Really good technique. The key things with this, as you can see, Caitlin's up tall, nice and strong through her trunk, so she's not allowing the band or the weight to pull her down and forward. So staying nice and, nice and upright. Tempo is really good, so it's a controlled speed of movement both up and down to ensure that the muscles are working all the time for each and every repetition to ensure that we get the most out of the exercise. And in our performance packs, like I said, you're going to have differing strengths uh, of band tension. This one here, we're going to do a bent over reverse fly. So again, moving into more of this posterior shoulder area, looking at the muscles around the shoulder blades. Um, and what we want to do is get into a bent position. You'll see Caitlin has a lovely soft bend in the knee, a lovely straight neutral spine, but flexing forward or hinging forward at the hips and maintaining that. Once you've got that, then you simply carry out this movement here. Again, it's all about squeezing the shoulder blades back and together and then pulling with your arms until the band actually hits you in the chest. Okay, doing 15 of those, Caitlin, keep going. By this time, Caitlin should really start to feel like she's getting some work out of all of this. This is the first of four rounds that we're actually gonna go through, okay? 
And the fifth exercise to finish off the round is what we call a renegade row. And this is a bit of a combination. What you're going to find that you're going to get good control in a push position, but then within the same exercise, you're also going to include a row variation, so a pull. All the while, you need to be nice and strong through your trunk and that key core area, so it's a real winner um, to finish off this round of five exercises. So Caitlin's coming into that long plank position. Again, she's nice and strong through here, drawing that belly button in high. Lovely neutral spine position. Maintaining that throughout, she then has to stabilise and stay strong through the arm that's down and planted, while the other one is coming up into a row position, squeezing that shoulder back and together. We're going to go for a total of 10 there, Caitlin. Good. Awesome. All right, that's the first five exercises. And what we're going to do now is we're going to loop through that four times over in succession. So back to the start. Caitlin, let's go for 10 reps here. Same thing again, really controlled tempo. Spread the floor and keep the band apart. You're going to feel like your shoulder blades are burning. The back of your shoulders through that rotator cuff area are working as well. And as with a normal push-up, you're going to get a lot of work through your chest and your pecs, your anterior delts. Really good. All right, straight on into the next one. Back to the row. There's your dowel, there's your broomstick. On it goes. Take a step back for me, Caitlin. All right, so squeezing shoulder blades back and together then pulling with your arms to your chest. We're going to do 15 here, Caitlin. That's four, five, six, that's it. You'll also see she's still nice and strong through her trunk, and that's a key theme throughout everything. Good, keep going until you hit 15. By about now, she should really start to feel a little bit of work creeping in. Definitely. How's that going? Yeah, it's good. Have you seen? I think so. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> Table counter. <laughs> All right. Actually, keep that. Now we go into an overhead press. <clears throat> so again, Caitlin's stepping into there. Great. Sneak the dowel through. All right. Same thing again. 15 here. Nice and strong. Good tempo. Chest is upright. Trunk is on. Doing really well. How are the shoulders? Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Keep that going. Seven more. One, two, three. That's it. Four. So it becomes increasingly more difficult to watch your technique and control the movements as you fatigue. So be really mindful of that. And if you need to take a short break to encourage or facilitate better technique, please do. All right, That's wonderful. Oh. Now we're going to go back to the bent over reverse fly. You can use the single or you can use it as a double, depending on how you're feeling at this point. See so how we go. Okay. So again, she's got a really strong base <coughs> position through her feet, feet hip width apart, soft bend in the knee, hinging forward from the hips with a neutral spine and then it squeezes the shoulder blades back and together pulling with the band until it hits you in the chest. You might be able to see that we're using the pink band here and Caitlin's got it doubled over. Okay, You could also just use one length of the band if it was a little too much. 15 reps here. We want really high volume repetition to get a lot of work out of these sessions. Okay, Volume is your friend with this particular muscle group. Keep working. Three more. One, two, three. Fantastic. Where are you feeling that, Caitlin? Shoulders. Yeah. Definitely in the back of the shoulders. Yeah, yeah. perfect. It's really targeted. And then, again, back to the fifth exercise of our circuit. This is often the most difficult for people, okay? So a lot of focus coming into this one. Technique is paramount as always. You can see again, she's lovely and strong through the trunk. That's really important. 
and then the rest is really coming from the shoulders and the arms. This is a great whole body compound movement to finish off this series of movements. And she's nearly halfway, which is about perfect. Halfway? <laughs> Do I have, how, what was I up to? Got four more. One, two, three, four, five, fantastic. All right, so at this point, you're halfway. You might need to take a small rest depending on how you're feeling. For those of you who are feeling pretty good, you just keep on going, okay? Caitlin's nice and strong, so we're gonna go straight back to the first exercise again. Okay, so on your knees there, Caitlin. Take your time with it. Try and focus on that first five, perhaps. Then take a small rest, and the second five. Good. One, two, three. Really, really good. So you can see technique hasn't changed, but you can see probably that it is quite a lot more difficult now with that element of fatigue creeping in. All right, take a short break there. And then after about 10 seconds, we're gonna finish off this set. One of the key themes is not sacrificing on technique. You need to try and find that balance between maintaining adequate technique, but getting a really good hard workout in. Two, three, four, last one. Really well done. <laughs> Compared to a regular push-up, are you feeling any more activity happening in and behind your shoulders using that band? Definitely. Yeah, great. Right. right. And then again, with these loop bands, the various colours indicate different strength. So for those of you that are a little more strong, you'll go for your heavy band variations. And then again, you've got different uh, colours there for the differing strengths. Same goes with the power bands. So as you improve with the session, you may need to adjust it. As you fatigue, you may need to adjust it. All right, so again, just taking a step back for me. Hands are just wider than shoulder width. Set the shoulder blades back and together, then pull with your arms to your side for 15. One, two, nice, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, really good, keep it going, five more. Again, there's no sacrifice in technique here, Caitlin looking really sharp with her movements, two more, despite the fact that she's probably pretty, uh, pretty tired, just not showing you. <laughs> good stuff. All right, so that's pull movement, straight into our overhead press. By this stage, you should be starting to develop a bit of rhythm. Stepping into that. Okay, great. Sneak your broomstick through, taking a hold of that, just wider than shoulders. Okay, so you pretty much want to line your thumbs up with the edge of your shoulder. Okay, and Caitlin here, we're going to go for about 15. Okay, let's go for 10, see where you stand. Just take some more rest if you need one, and then we'll finish off. That's four. Five, six, seven, eight, good, nine, ten. All right, have a rest. Just take a breather. It's a good one. About 10 to 15 seconds. And with this one, you should really start to feel it working that specific shoulder area. You're also going to get a little bit of that upper chest happening in there. And even on the way down, as you're trying to control it back down, you will get some activity behind your shoulder blades. Five more to go here. One, two, three, four. Last one, finish well. Five, really good, well done. All right. And what you'll note here is we're trying as best we can to keep the series moving along so that you know you get that element of fatigue into it you get that element of work into it so that you actually get a really solid workout out of this start to finish again she's got a really strong base <coughs> position through her feet feet hip width apart soft bend in the knee hinging forward from the hips with a neutral spine and then it squeezes the shoulder blades back and together pulling with the band until it hits you in the chest 
you might be able to see that we're using the pink band here and Caitlin's got it doubled over. Okay, you could also just use one length of the band if it was a little too much. 15 reps here. We want really high volume repetition to get a lot of work out of these sessions. Okay. Volume is your friend with this particular muscle group. Keep working. Three more. One, two. All right, finishing with what I think is the most difficult again. 10 repetitions here. All right, same thing again. A really strong base at her feet, a really strong base at her hands, really strong for her trunk, drawing that belly button up and holding that. Her back is lovely and flat throughout, and then it's just arm movement. Okay, shift the weight onto one side and stay strong while the other arm pulls up. Shift the weight onto the other side, stay strong, then the other arm pulls up. For a total of 10 repetitions, well done. Alright. Take 20 seconds there, Caitlin. And then we're going to finish off with our fourth time through. Good. Alright. So, for those of you watching at home, you should really start to be getting the hang of this now. But again, bringing your attention back to the fact that you've got the band on. Spread the floor just wider than shoulders or at about shoulder width. Your tempo or your speed is really important. Okay, Caitlin's going to do five in a row at a slow, controlled rate, then take a small break and she's going to keep going with it. For those of you who are feeling good, just keep moving through. Good, Caitlin. So you can see, even for well, someone that's fit as Caitlin, <laughs> it is going to be difficult by the time you get to this fourth round. All right. Go. Taking just a small step back. All right. Let's go again. Up nice and tall. Set the shoulders. Shoulders come back with your scaps on. Then pull with the bar to your side. 15 reps. One, two, three. Four, five, all right, keep that up, it's looking good. Really good. That's it, try and focus on pulling those shoulders back. I know it's hard, five more, one, two, three, four, five, awesome. Then, straight into our overhead press. Slight feet in there. Good. Again, use of a broomstick or a mop is really handy here. Alright, good. Caitlin, let's go for 15. Try and get through 10 with really good technique. If you feel like you've got enough left in the tank, push through to 15. If not, stop at 10 and take a breather. Three more. One, two, three. Good, rest, bring it down. <laughs> We're going to take the time just to allow those muscles to recover just okay. enough to allow for good technique. Alright. Alright, five more. Working really hard here, let's go. Two, three, four, five. Go, go, go. <laughs> right, we got this. At least we know it's difficult. <laughs> Alright, good, well done. Again, she's got a really strong base position through her feet, feet hip width apart, soft bend in the knee, hinging forward from the hips with a neutral spine, and then it squeezes the shoulder blades back in together, pulling with the band until it hits you in the chest. You might be able to see that we're using the pink band here, and Caitlin's got it doubled over. Okay, you could also just use one length of the band if it was a little too much. 15 reps here. We want really high volume repetition to get a lot of work out of these sessions, okay? Volume is your friend with this particular muscle group. Keep working. Three more. One, two, awesome. Uh, all right, the row. All right, last time through our Renegade Row. Now, we're using two kilo dumbbells here. 
for those of you who don't have any dumbbells at home, that's absolutely fine. You can just use no weight at all. Transitioning your weight onto one side, then just come up and touch your chest, come back down. Transitioning your weight onto the other side, come up, touch your chest and go back down. It's still going to be really difficult, especially by the time that you do four reps through. Otherwise, you can get really creative using things like milk bottles and water bottles or various different items that you have around the house. But generally speaking, this exercise is hard enough to take care of itself. How are you feeling? Good. All right. So that's our cycle of five exercises. That's push-pull. And it's going to take about 20 minutes. Now what we want to do is we want to finish with a little bit of a uh, burner or a finisher for our for our abs and a little bit of a specific input for our core. She's already going to feel really nice and warm through there and potentially quite fatigued, but we'll see how we go here and push through these. As part of the performance pack, you will get sliders like these. Okay, so these feature. All right, now what I want you to do, Caitlin, is fold yourself in half, bringing your legs up towards yourself. Okay, so coming up. Taking hips up. Yep, so you want to come into a pike position and back down. Really good. All right, let's go. Two. Now, how hard is that for you, Caitlin? It's okay, but I have short hamstrings. <laughs> yeah. Three. Let's try, let's try ten here. That's four. Now, what you'll find with this is it's really quite difficult. Some of you might be able to go all the way up. Some of you might not be able to go quite as far. That's okay. You're still going to get the work into the system. Where are you going to be feeling it? Well, you're primarily going to be feeling it through your abs. Okay. But bear in mind, like Caitlin mentioned, she, feeling, she feels as though at the moment she's got tight hamstrings, so you're gonna feel a little bit of that going on too, perhaps, or other things, but um, see how you go, okay? How's that? Good. Pretty hard? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go into that same position, okay? So keeping your feet positioned on the sliders with your toes on and your heels up. Into a long plank, nice and strong through your trunk. Draw that belly button in and keep it bent. Now what I want Caitlin to do is bend both your knees up towards your elbows. Good, and back. And 10 of these. Two, three. Now depending on how good you are with your strength in this key area, you may again need to break this into smaller chunks to get through it. That's okay. Okay, four more. Work really hard here, Caitlin. Keep it going. Technique looks really good. Two more. One, two. Awesome. Have a rest. Oh. How are your abs? Good. That's a good one. I yeah. like that one. So that Sweet. one's a little bit different again. Yeah. Now we're going to work into a mountain climber. So this is potentially a bit more familiar to a few of you. But again, we assume that long plank position. You're really strong through your hands and your shoulders in that long plank position. Think about pushing the ground away and holding that. Then you're nice and strong through your body, okay? You're really tight through your trunk, through your bum, and through your legs. And we're gonna to stretch that leg out and keep everything really tight. Then we're gonna do a simple mountain climber. So alternating by bringing one knee up to the elbow and back, then the other knee up to the elbow and back. So let's have a crack at that. Let's go for a total of 10 here, Caitlin. So just setting up, yeah, perfect one. Like that? That's it. Two, three, Four, five, really good. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Well done. And now, just to mix things up a little bit, and with a little bit more of an emphasis so on our obliques, so these structures uh, on the side of our trunk here, really, really important as well. We're going to go into a same position. So the start and end position for all of these are the same. So long plank position here, Caitlin. Toes on the, on the sliders. And Caitlin, what you're going to do from that position, one at a time and alternating between sides, is take your leg out to the side, then back to the center, <laughs> out to the side, then back to the center. Like so that? That's it, that's one, two, three, four, Really good. Five, six, seven, eight, two more, nine, ten. Unreal. And rest. All right, we've only got 
one more cycle through that abdominal circuit and then that's that session done. And at this speed, that's about a good half an hour workout. How are you feeling? Yeah, good. Yeah. How about <laughs> last one feel compared to the others? I, I definitely think the hard one for me is the pike. Yeah. Yeah. That's why the pike goes first. The pike is typically the most difficult. And so you put the hardest one first and then work through the others as you feel you can. Okay. And that last one again, rather than just bringing your knees straight up and down to really work that rectus or your abs, this one's going to be working to the side just to capture a little bit more of that lateral trunk musculature, your obliques in particular. You're even going to get a little bit of glutes as well working through there. As with all of these, because you're actually having to hold a long plank position, it's also going to get activation through your true core. So that deep set of muscles, that inner unit foundation is really important. So let's fly through those again. Pike down. Yep. We're aiming for 10, but technique again trumps everything, so we'll see how she's feeling. One, two, three. If you feel you need to, Caitlin, at five, you can take a breather. This is really hard I'll stuff. She's making it look easy. Six, seven, Eight, two more, nine, ten, unreal, okay, three to go, next thing she's going to do, going back to that second exercise in this series, long plank position and bring both the knees up to the chest, okay, good, ten of these, bearing in mind that prior to this, Caitlin did a whole set of exercises aimed at priming the back here, the back of the shoulders and the muscles around the shoulder blades as well as the chest and the anterior portion of the shoulders. So she should be really warm but the other thing to watch out for is the fact that she'll be quite fatigued in those areas. How'd you go there? Yeah, good. Perfect. <laughs> Alright, this is what we want to see. So if you're not feeling this way by the end of the circuit then you haven't used heavy enough bands for the exercises prior to this or you probably haven't done it with adequate technique through range. So just focus on those key things as you move through to ensure you get what you're looking for out of this workout. All right, now mountain climbers, so 10 of these. Right. When you're ready, on you. One, two, three, four. Technique is bang on. Okay, so this is what you should be looking to emulate at home. Well done. Okay, and then the last one, the wax on, wax off style, ab, finisher. Okay, long plank position. Good. <laughs> Two. Now, Caitlin's quite flexible. She's got great mobility, so you'll note that she can get right out to the side and around. Some of you may not be able to get quite as far, and that's okay. Go to the limits of your range of motion so that you feel um, comfortable to a point with that. There we are. All right, so that's our session. That's the upper body push and pull session flowing into a bit of a circuit for your core and your abs to finish. And again, this should take you, you know, around 30 minutes um, when done with really good technique, when done with really good tempo, um, again, being really selective with what band tension you use is important. For those of you that are stronger, make sure that you up that band tension by using thicker bands um, to make sure that uh, yeah, you're getting really a really good hard workout from this particular set of exercises. Cheers. Well done, Caitlin.